Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Richard Salman, Chair of CFP Board's Board of Directors. We're excited to share with you the next steps for CFP Board's Public Awareness Campaign. CFP certification is the recognized standard for financial planning within the financial services industry. Yet among the public, not everyone understands the benefits of a holistic financial plan. Many people know they need help with their finances, but they are hesitant to seek out professional assistance. Our public awareness campaign initiative was established to address that by making people aware of the benefits of partnering with a CFP professional to achieve their goals and the peace of mind that comes from having a financial plan. Today, we will be unveiling a set of new campaign advertisements designed with the objective of increasing consumer awareness of CFP professionals. You'll be among the first to see the new TV ads that will begin airing on national cable television channels right after Labor Day. With me here today in CFP Board's office is Kevin Keller, CFP Board CEO, Mike Dabity, CEO and managed partner of, managing partner of the research agency Heart and Mind Strategies, Heather Knight, creative director of the advertising agency White64, and Matt White, chairman and CEO of White64. We have a lot to cover with you during this webinar. We'll be sharing a brief recap of why CFP Board has a public awareness campaign and what led us to refresh the advertising. We'll review the data-driven research process that has informed the development of the new ads. We'll show you the new ads and our media strategy, including where and when you'll see the new ads displayed. And we'll have time at the end of the presentation to answer any questions you have. Before we get started, let me cover a few housekeeping notes. If you run into issues with the sound for this presentation or it seems like the slides are out of sync, try refreshing your web browser. There is a question and answer function on your screen that you can use to submit questions to us at any time during the program. We plan to address as many questions as possible during a Q&A session at the end of the program. And if we do not get to your question today during the broadcast, CFP Board will follow up to provide you an answer. So let's get started. Why does CFP Board have a public awareness campaign? In short, it's because you asked for it. Our periodic surveys of CFP professionals have consistently identified increasing public awareness of CFP professionals as your top priority for the CFP Board. Our latest major survey of CFP professionals was conducted in 2017, and fully 95% of responding CFP professionals said their number one priority for CFP Board was building and promoting the CFP certification brand. The Board of Directors values your feedback, and we've incorporated that into our strategic priorities for the organization. The first of our four current strategic priorities is growing awareness of CFP certification as the recognized standard for competent and ethical financial planners. Awareness is also a critical part of our mission to benefit the public by granting the CFP certification and upholding it as the recognized standard of excellence for competent and ethical personal financial planning. We launched our first large-scale national public awareness campaign in April 2011. To make sure we use our campaign resources wisely, we established a specific target audience for the campaign. We call that target audience mass affluent initiators. They are aged 35 to 64 years old. They hold investable assets of $100,000 to $1 million, and they have a minimum household income of $100,000. Mass affluent initiators also have a specific psychographic profile. They are optimistic, self-confident, and responsible. They are also more likely to trust expert advice. Having a target audience helps keep the campaign's media buys and messaging focused. Let me turn things over to Kevin to review some of the campaign's results over the years. Great. Thank you very much, Richard, and good morning, everybody. The campaign's first iterations have made a strong impact on public awareness of CFP certification. Unaided awareness of CFP certification doubled among our target audience after the campaign's first four years. And last year alone, the campaign advertising generated more than one billion impressions. Here you see the data from our brand tracking studies in 2011, 2015, and 17. 
Total consumer awareness remained steady between 15 and 18 at 85% and 86%, the highest levels that we have ever achieved. But there was a noticeable, noticeable drop-off for unaided awareness. Unaided awareness is an important factor of overall awareness. It means we ask people what certification first comes to mind when they think about financial planning professionals. In 2017, our brand tracking study found that unaided awareness of CFP certification among our target audience was 27%. That is 10 percentage points above where we were before we initiated the campaign, but it is still a significant drop from 2015. The campaign advertising from 2014 to 17 centered around our DJ television ad. It was a truly a breakthrough ad, but the downward trend that we saw in 2017's research signaled that it was time to refresh the campaign. As we set out to refresh the campaign, we knew that the campaign's direction needed to remain data-driven. We needed consumer research to understand what types of messages resonate best with our target audience today. To that end, we partnered with Heart and Mind Strategies, a consulting firm that specializes in uncovering how people think, but perhaps more importantly, how they feel and how they make decisions. Heart and Mind Strategies conducted qualitative and quantitative research into consumer attitudes toward financial planning, the CFP brand, and how financial planning can help the public fulfill their needs. We used what we learned from that research to develop a new creative brief and a new brand promise, which Mike Dabadee will share here with us shortly. We took that brand promise to several top-notch advertising agencies and conducted a competitive review that led us to hire a new advertising agency. We ultimately selected White 64, an award-winning creative ad agency based here in the Washington area in suburban Virginia. It has been great to see the way our new agency partners have worked together over the past several months to bring all of this together. Now let me turn things over to Mike Dabadee, CEO and Managing Partner of Heart and Mind Strategies. Mike will walk us through some of the research that informed our new brand promise and the creative for our new advertising. Thank you, Kevin. As you shared, Heart and Mind Strategies conducted extensive qualitative and quantitative research to better understand how consumers in your target audience think, feel, and make decisions related to financial planning and to the CFP brand. Our research generated a lot of information, but our focus was how to use that information to help the CFP board tell its story to your target audience. Through the research, we wanted to better understand how to best tell the CFP brand story in a way that is personally relevant to consumers, differentiated from other certifications, and actionable to consumers looking for a financial planner. To inform this objective, we embarked on a rigorous four-phase process. First, in the framing phase, we conducted an extensive review of all past work and other available data to develop hypotheses to then take these into the next two phases. The second phase was comprised of qualitative research to reveal how participants make their decisions regarding financial planning and working with a certified financial planner professional. Third, we validated those findings in quantitative research. This included a national online survey focused on the brand story, the positioning, the messages, 
that those consumers said that they needed and that they wanted to hear. And then lastly, we went to activate our findings with the CFP board and White64 to address the CFP brand positioning and develop the creative brief that would help guide the advertising. Mike, I think it's important for uh, the stakeholders to know you didn't just talk to consumers who don't use a CFP, but part of the research included talking with clients of actual CFP professionals. That's exactly right. So we developed the research uh, methodology to look at consumers who are currently working with a certified financial planner and even those who are not working with a certified financial planner but would be interested in doing so, so we could understand how the CFP brand would resonate in hearts and minds, rationally and emotionally, with both of those groups. Thanks. So with that, let me now turn to some of the research results uh, of what we actually found. Across all of that design and, and the, the methodology, we can summarize our learnings into five core themes. First, consumers want a deeper familiarity and understanding of the CFP brand. The CFP designation could be stronger top of mind among consumers, and Kevin spoke to that earlier. Second, there is opportunity to enhance the CFP brand by addressing the personal needs, both rationally and emotionally, of consumers and financial planners. Third, CFP professionals can play the role of a trusted counselor to their clients. This is a role that consumers are asking CFP professionals to fulfill for them. Fourth, CFP professionals need to be advocates of certification to their clients and in referrals, being proactive to tell clients that they have earned the CFP designation. Fifth, the fiduciary duty and messages around ethics and standards are important messages that support the CFP brand positioning. There are some additional insights that I'd like to, to share as well, and these are related to informing the advertising strategy and the creative. Consumers want to hear that a CFP professional understands them. Our research found that there are several key messages that they need and that they, that they want to hear. First, consumers are telling us that their lives are chaotic um, and that they don't have time not to get this right. A CFP professional for them is the most credible and knowledgeable partner to address a holistic range of issues and life events that they are facing. Second, partnering with a CFP professional will provide them a sense of harmony in knowing that they are on the right path toward financial confidence and security. Third, I can trust them, trust the CFP, to act in my best interest and that I don't need to worry. And lastly, a CFP professional will help me develop a financial plan, a roadmap that lets me know that I am prepared for today and that I am on the right path to a secure future. Ultimately, as you can see, these messages are powerful because they persuade by reason and they motivate by emotion. And that is what the CFP brand campaign does. It persuades by reason, it motivates by emotion. These messages are credible because of three core benefits that resonate with the target audience. That a CFP professional provides comprehensive planning. That the designation carries with it credibility and competency. That the CFP professionals play the role of a trusted counselor. These are reasons for individuals to work with CFP professionals and to trust the CFP brand. This then leads to the development of the new CFP brand promise. This is not something that consumers would see or hear. Let me be sure I clarify that. But it is a statement that guides how and what consumers hear. On the left is the old CFP brand promise. Very inward focusing and a bit rational. 
On the right, however, is the new CFP brand promise, informed by this consumer research. More emotional, focused on benefits, and consumer-facing. Once the, the agency, White64, had the creative brief and the research findings, we then moved on and conducted some qualitative research to assess the creative. The methodology that we used involved focus groups among mass affluent initiators in three different cities in the country. In each city, we had two different audiences, and we used what we call a living room style setup to encourage conversation. You'll notice in the photo that there is not a conference room table, but instead the room is set up more like living room style. The campaigns were assessed against various evaluative criteria based on the desired outcomes and objectives from the creative brief. There were 10 statements that covered both attitudinal and behavioral outcomes. For example, did the ad get my attention? We would call that breakthrough. And we also assessed if the campaign connected at an emotional level, such as making one feel at ease or providing a sense of security. The top campaign performed the best across all of these criteria and objectives. The top performing campaign reflects the consumer insights from our research. Participants can see themselves in the concept is what they told us. It is relatable especially to those who don't currently use a CFP professional. The campaign conveys that working with a CFP professional is important for everyone. It reminds them to start planning early in life. It clearly communicates the concept of having a goal, and by working with a CFP professional, one can reach and attain that goal. Participants also mention that this concept is trying to brand CFP, to establish a link of the importance of having a financial plan and should be created in partnership with a CFP professional. I know you're all anxious to see the campaign creative. Let me now turn things over to Heather Knight, Creative Director of White64. Thanks, Mike, and hello, everyone. As Mike mentioned, based on the research and the focus group testing, there was one creative concept that rose above the rest. That top performing campaign is one we call It's All Possible with a CFP Professional. And to emphasize both the emotional and rational benefits of working with a CFP professional, we tried to play up the holistic thinking that a CFP professional brings in order to create a roadmap and the assurance that it provides the personalized, comprehensive, and flexible plan, and the excitement that that creates for an individual, and a plan that is created with a client's best interest in mind, which provides confidence. We then brought these benefits to life using the stories of different people at different points in their financial lives. We created a world of the imagination that could reflect their hopes and dreams and show them helping, helping them to achieve something that, and, and create something that would stand out from other financial services advertising. The campaign emphasizes the value of having a personal financial plan. These stories show how our hero character's relationship with their CFP professional is a partnership. And throughout the campaign, the CFP brand is highlighted to increase recall and awareness. So we're now we're going to play for you the first of these two 30-second TV spots, Shelly and Cal and Valerie, and uh, you'll see each one twice in its entirety. Making my dreams a reality takes more than just investment advice. From insurance to savings to retirement, it takes someone with experience and knowledge who can help me build a complete plan Brian, my certified financial planner professional, is committed to working in my best interest. I call it my comfortable future plan, and it's all possible with a CFP professional. Find your certified financial planner professional at letsmakeaplan.org. Making my dreams a reality takes more than just investment advice. From insurance to savings to retirement, it takes someone with experience and knowledge who can help me build a complete plan. 
Brian, my certified financial planner professional, is committed to working in my best interest. I call it my comfortable future plan, and it's all possible with a CFP professional. Find your certified financial planner professional at letsmakeaplan.org. We've saved our money, and now we get to spend it our way. But we worry if we have enough to last. Ellen, our certified financial planner professional, helps us manage our cash flow and plan for the unexpected. Her experience and training gave us the courage to go for it. It's our confident forever plan. And it's all possible with a CFP professional. Find your certified financial planner professional at letsmakeaplan.org. We've saved our money, and now we get to spend it our way. But we worry if we have enough to last. Ellen, our certified financial planner professional, helps us manage our cash flow and plan for the unexpected. Her experience and training gave us the courage to go for it. It's our confident forever plan. And it's all possible with a CFP professional. Find your certified financial planner professional at letsmakeaplan.org. And now we're going to share with you what we call a sizzle reel, which is basically just a compilation uh, to show the breadth of this campaign. It'll include uh, not only some of these clips from the video, but print, our digital display ads, social, radio, and more. Now I'm going to hand it over to Matt White, President and CEO of White64, to discuss the media plan. Thanks, Heather. We have two primary media objectives with this campaign. First, we want to increase awareness and preference for CFP professionals among the target audience. And second, we want to drive consumers to the Let's Make a Plan uh, .org site and continue to funnel traffic to the site. Our strategy is to place advertising in multiple communication channels. Television continues to drive awareness like no other medium. It will be the backbone of our media buy, providing opportunities for reach across a variety of different types of networks that have high viewership levels of our target audience. We want to expand the reach and the message frequency among our target audience. We will layer additional mediums on top of the TV to increase message frequency and add recall with our target audience. The TV buy will be flanked with radio, magazine, digital, social, and SEM, paid search, all running concurrently. Media research identified the top content categories of our target audience, which led us to focus on financial, news, and lifestyle programming. Campaign performance will be tracked and optimized throughout the buy, allowing the media team to make adjustments based on insights and analytics from real-time data. You can see here that the public awareness campaign will uh, include, uh, obviously, a heavy share of television at 52%, uh, followed by digital, SEM, magazine, radio, and social. The next slide shows uh, the programming and the networks that will be used to feature the public awareness campaign. 
The CFP board will have sponsorships with CNBC and CNN. The CNN sponsorship is part of New Day and a new program called CNN Money Now, online content and editorial of CNN.com. These sponsorships are intended to uh, elevate and incorporate the CFP brand beyond just a regular media buy. The media team has worked closely with CNBC to identify upcoming CNBC in-person events that the CFP board will sponsor and participate in. In addition, the team worked with CNN and CNN.com to develop an on-air online sponsorship of custom content called CNN Money Moves. Media was chosen based on their concentration of the target audience. This media buy will deliver well over 1.1 billion impressions. Finally is the media flow chart, and you can see that the uh, campaign is scheduled to kick off next Tuesday on September 4th. It is going to be a 10-week uh, buy uh, that is going to be very heavy with television. We are going to be on, as uh, you saw, CNBC, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, ESPN, the NFL Network, Food, and AMC. Radio will kick off on uh, National Public Radio uh, and, and American Public Media. And the digital includes a heavy use of TV spots across the website of our target audience, as well as presence on programming accessed by Roku, Apple TV and Amazon Fire Stick. The digital banner ads will appear uh, with message frequency and supporting people to go to the let's, let's make a plan .org site. Social kicks off exposure on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And our paid search will continue its efforts to supporting and driving people to the let's make a plan. So I will pass it back to Kevin to discuss how the CFP board is going to extend the life of this campaign and the resources available to the CFP professionals to promote the campaign within their own communities. Thank you very much, Matt. I think the first thing to emphasize is that this is an integrated campaign. While this is the paid portion of the campaign, that brand promise that Mike talked about uh, a more confident today and a more secure tomorrow. That brand promise will be integrated across all of the communication channels that we have. So our web, the work that we do with public relations, the media, et cetera. This is an integrated campaign. The paid portion that we've talked about today, as Matt said, will reach over a billion people, close to 1.2 billion impressions. Our CFP professionals' clients and potential clients around the country will be seeing the ads on national cable television channels and online platforms. We hope our CFP professionals will help us extend the campaign messages in their local communities. From our website, CFP professionals will be able to access links to the TV spots, on CFP Board's YouTube channel, banner ads for use on personal website, uh, print and P, uh, PF, P, PDFs, sample social media posts, and customizable radio announcements. Now, I've had a couple questions. I'm sitting here watching what's coming in, and people are saying, a couple people are having technical problems. I can't, I can't see the ads. All of this will be available on September 4th when we launch the new ad. So if you go there now, it won't be there now, but it will be there uh, once when we launch the campaign live on September 4th. We hope that you will find these resources helpful and will use them to extend the campaign's reach. We want your clients and prospective clients to connect to you uh, with the great messages they're seeing in the campaign advertising. So we're about a half hour in. We've shared a lot today. It's time to turn to your questions. Uh, please use the Q&A function on your screen to submit questions if you've not done so already. And uh, we've received a number of questions already. I'll kind of moderate here. We'll go from, from back and forth. And so 
uh, and I'll kind of we'll moderate. We'll we'll answer as many questions as we have. Again, as Richard said, if we don't answer your question uh, on the air today, we'll do it by email as a follow-up. So the first question is from Mark. Mark asks, uh, how much money have we spent on the campaign total? That's an answer that I, uh, I can answer that question, Mark. Uh, we launched the campaign in 2011 We've spent uh, over $75 million to date on the campaign. Richard, do you want to speak about how the board oversees the, the staff and the role in the advertising and, and how it works through the budgeting process? Well, you know, one of the key promises we made to the CFP certificate community back when we started this, when the when the CFP professionals started asking for it, was that we would, as a board, oversee and track how the the campaign is performing and and the good that it is doing, and that's one of the things that read, led to this refresh. Is as Kevin stated earlier, we saw a drop in unaided awareness, and that unaided awareness is really a key metric. Uh, it's the fact that when you talk about financial planning, we want CFP professional to be the first thing that comes to people's minds, and so when we saw that dropping off it was time then to come out with a new campaign. And, and specifically, one of the things the board asked was, you know, the DJ ad was a breakthrough ad. It got us a lot of publicity. It got us a lot of press. And it increased the sort of the visibility of financial planning in general. But we really wanted this campaign to be specifically focused on the CFP brand and promoting that and especially driving the consumer to see if to let's make a plan dot org so that they can get the help that they need, Kevin. Great. Thank you very much, Richard. I can tell you that the board has been very specific uh, setting a five year organizational goal that we continue to increase the awareness of CFP, the unaided awareness. And that's, a, that's a, a goal that you have given me and the staff to work towards. You know, one of the other things I would mention that I think is a significant accomplishment is the total awareness, uh, which I think was 85% in 2015. It was 86% in 2017. You know, that puts us right in the same ballpark within a margin of error of CPA. Uh, and that is a significant accomplishment uh, in and of itself that the CFP brand on total awareness is within a margin of error statistically of where the CPA credential is at. You know, uh, we had a question. The campaign has run continuously since 2011. That is right, Mark. You're asking it. We've, it has run continuously since 2011, and the board has renewed it each year. So, the board initially, uh, and this was before your time, the board initially committed to four years, and then at, at that four year, they continued to an ongoing. So it's part of the strategic objectives of strategic priorities of CFP board, and the board of directors continues to, uh, to monitor the results. I think uh, the CFP community listening knows this, but uh, I will remind folks that of your renewal fees, for CFP certification, $145 is set aside to cover the direct expenses of the campaign. So there's no overhead. It's all that $145 is set aside for the campaign. All right. Uh, the next question here, uh, will the slides be available? The answer is yes. We'll have those available on September the 4th when everything else is there, uh, uh, will CFP board give out the brand promise? Richard, you have a, you have a point of view on this. Well, you know, I, I have to tell you that when this was first uh, released to the board of directors as the new brand promise, is I was so excited because I've been trying to distill that down to a short phrase for about 25 years now. And they absolutely nailed it. And so as CFP certificates and CFP professionals, we can, we can use that brand promise, you know, uh, confidence today and a more secure tomorrow. That's, that's essentially what we do as certified financial planners. So absolutely that will be available. Uh, we have a question here. Can we use the print and TV ads on our website? So we will have everything up uh, uh, on September 4th. 
and the location will be on a special site called, tell me again, what's the site? CFP.net PAC. All right, so it's uh, CFP.net slash uh, PAC for public awareness campaign. Uh, the question though, can we use the print or TV ads? Make sure your compliance people are in the loop on that. They may have a point of view, but from our standpoint, You've, it's your money that's helped create them. We want you to extend the campaign as broadly as possible. Possible. Question is, what is the cost of this campaign? Uh, the media buy is uh, $7.5 million here. We've been on the air. We have production costs and everything, but uh, this, this portion of the campaign is $7.5 million dollars. Um, here's a question that I get on the on the road a lot. Is the campaign spread out by region? So when I go to uh, New York, the New Yorkers all ask, why are we spending money to advertise, no offense, Richard, in Kansas? <laughs> when I go to Kansas, they want to know, why are we spending money on that expensive New York market to advertise when they get no benefit? I'm going to let my, uh, Matt... White speak to the issue of why we use national cable as opposed to buying specific markets. Yeah, and so the you know the target audience that we're going after is this mass affluent initiator, and they, these are people with a hundred thousand dollars of investable assets up to a million, and with a household income of a hundred thousand plus. Um, it's the age group is thirty five sixty four. And rather than buying spot market like New York or Kansas City, a national cable buy enables us to reach that audience in a very broad way and so that we can maximize the awareness levels that we're going after. Great. Thank you. So that's the answer. And then the magazines we buy are distributed nationally. They're, they're broad. The national public radio is, mm -hmm. is just we're buying the national, not the local time frame. Right. So the campaign is a national, uh, is a national campaign. Uh, Heather, here's a question for you. Uh, we had one of our listeners ask, any concern about the moving objects being distracting? So would you would you address that? Heather was the creative director on the campaign, and if you'd speak to why what what we're trying to get with that uh, uh, technique. Yeah, I think in each one of these spots, we're just trying to bring to life this idea of uh, you know the world of everything that you dream about accomplishing, your individual plan for the future, and so having motion is one of the things that we think actually kind of you know, brings a lot of attention to this spot. Um, hopefully you guys, as you see it over and over we'll, again, we'll see there are lots of little bits and, and pieces and, and sort of Easter eggy kind of things that uh, you may not notice the first time around, but upon seeing it, you know, a second or third or fourth time, um, you may catch some of these fun little pieces that we've put in there. And we think that that makes it a spot that, you know, people will want to pay attention to. Great. Well, we have people from the left and the right listening this morning. Someone asks, Fox News, really? And then someone else asks, you're on MSNBC, so Matt, back to you on why we're buying across the political spectrum. Well, and that's exactly it. We are buying across the political spectrum. We are buying 3564, and uh, we are reaching this audience that has the investable assets of 100 to a $1 million dollars with an average household income of $100,000. And if you look at that audience um, and you look at the demographics in, in America, it, it is pretty evenly split across uh, all of those three networks, uh, Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. Great. Richard, this question has, uh, uh, I think, uh, should go to you. Will our dues increase to pay for the campaign? So there's a couple things we should address there. Uh, well, the short answer is no. Uh, the longer answer is when the campaign, campaign first started back uh, 2011, uh, $145 per year, as Kevin said, was specifically designated to go to this campaign, and that is what's used every year to promote this campaign. So no, there will not be any new dues increase to go along with this campaign. And... Let's not, you know, uh, that, let's just talk a minute. Can we take a minute and just help folks that 
difference between your recertification fee and what we typically think of as membership dues. So look, we the like the point I want to make is dues are typically you think of dues when you have a membership association. CFP board is the professional body, it is the certifying body. We have a recertification fee. So you typically think of paying dues to belong to a membership association like FPA or NASA. But uh, if it's, uh, uh, you know, our certification, it's a recertification fee. Matt, this question's for you. Uh, when will the ads uh, air to generate maximum visibility? So we launched September 4th. Is there a peak or is there, do we go up and are we at a pretty level of... Uh, well, it is, it is a, uh, it, the, the TV, the bulk of the uh, TV is still a very, very powerful medium, as I talked about, and the... Uh, um, if, if we were going to do this campaign five years ago, you would probably, rather than 50%, you would probably be running at 80% TV. Um, but the way that the TV is flighted, the first three weeks... Flighted? Flighted. The, 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 the first... For those of us who are not advertising people yeah, from... Uh, so uh, when the spots air, the right. frequency schedule. at which the schedule, um, the first three weeks is going to be heaviest, the last three weeks... Are going to be heaviest and then it will be slightly lighter in the middle four got it okay like a sandwich like a sandwich good all right uh, i get this question when i'm out on the road some and so uh why is the campaign limited to 35 to 64 my audience is 65 plus mm -hmm. so let's talk about the target market how we buy the media and the spillover effect that we get when we when we when the media buyers go to go to market. Well, 65 plus watch TV uh, at a higher percentage than 35 plus. So by buying 35, 64, you're automatically getting the 65 plus. So we don't target necessarily 65 plus because they are the heaviest TV watchers. Well, and this is kind of the other side of that question, Matt. How are we reaching people in their 20s and 30s? Because, again, that target market uh, of, that we're buying is, is 35 to 64. But if we went back and looked at that pie chart, uh, to speak about the social media and that piece as well. Well, which is, is exactly my point. You know, five years ago, we would have been at 80% TV. Now we're at 50%. And the other, you know, the other mediums that we're looking at are uh, digital, social, uh, and uh, search, search engine marketing. Um, from a digital standpoint, uh, video is, uh, is part of everything that we're doing. But the, on, on the digital side, where there are new tools to reach younger audiences, over-the-top mediums. Um, That's Roku, for the people who've cut the cable, right? Right, exactly. So Roku, Hulu, mm -hmm. and then we YouTube. talked about the YouTube, those videos that I always press, you know, after four seconds to go right to the video I want to watch. All right. Exactly. Uh, is there a date? This is for you, Richard. Is there a date when the additional fee, that's the $145, will be sunset? Well, I would say, Kevin, that that goes, that question will be answered when the strategic priorities and the mission of the organization change. Because right now, our certificates are telling us, 95% of them, that this is a very high priority for them, that they want CFP Board to be doing this. Uh, one of our four main strategic priorities is growing awareness of CFP certification. That comes directly out of that request from our certificates. And remember, the mission of the organization is to benefit the public by granting the CFP certification and upholding it as the recognized standard of excellence for competent and ethical personal financial planning. One of the best ways we can do that is to make sure that consumers know what a certified financial planner professional will do for them and help them connect. So as long as there's a need, there's not a plan for a sunset. Great. A uh, couple things here. Uh, Matt, I think this one goes back to you. Matt White is the uh, president and CEO of White64 Advertising. Are we emphasizing 
search engine optimization or SEO and social media. So I think we've talked about that, but if you would just uh, yes. give the percentages. Yes, search is uh, 8% of our overall budget. Search and then what is a, so social media? Search, so, search is eight percent, social is four percent, and digital is twenty eight percent. So combined, that's well over a third yes. is, uh, yeah. is online or social media. Yeah, almost forty percent. Perfect. Um, here's a question: Are there print materials that can be used explaining the benefits of CFPs and other designations? Yes, we have those. They're available online and. Uh, when we post the when we post the um, the video of this, let's put the location so we have the link so that we can get that up right away. Uh, next question: uh, uh, Why not ESPN, Matt? Uh, I I think I just failed to mention it. E ESPN is part of sports Good. is a big part of sports is a big part of what we're doing. ESPN, NFL Network. Um, Great, appreciate that. Uh, we have a question. How are referral? We're dry. All of this drives uh, drives the viewer to the Let's Make a Plan dot org website. And so we have a question. How are referrals determined? And those are typically the question. The answer to that question. Those are typically driven by a uh, zip code search. So if you put in, if you go to letsmakeaplan.org, you put your zip code in, that's how uh, you'll get, um, that's how you'll get uh, the results. How many advi here's a question, how many advisors um, uh, have CFP certification? Um, it's, and the question is nearly 82,000, actually it's over 82,000 uh, today, so it's like 82,154 for the uh, financial planning reporter who asked that question. Well, and I think the other important part of that, Kevin, this is Richard again, is that it's a growing percentage of the overall advisor population. Yeah, as you think about, we use the Cerulli uh, database, and that, that database has been flat to slightly declining. CFP certification since I came here in 2011 is up over 50%. So we were at 54,600 when I came. We're at 82,154 uh, today. I think we're getting to the end of our questions here. Uh, this is one that we frequently get when I'm out at Certificate Connections. What metrics are being used, and what are we trying to achieve? So, Richard, why don't you take that, and then I want to I want to I want to well, follow as, up with you. As as we mentioned earlier, the unaided awareness uh, is a critical metric, and then total awareness, which is the combination of unaided and aided awareness, are what we're looking at. And we use an independent third-party research firm that's not affiliated with CFP Board, not not affiliated with our our advertising and creative partners, so that we're getting unbiased data. And and again, there there's all one of the challenges you have when using statistics is what's your margin of error, right? And obviously, as your sample size goes up, your margin of error goes down, but it never completely goes away. And, and you do get to a point where you've got simply no more, no more room you can advance in terms of the, the accuracy of the information that you're getting. But we feel like we're using a consistent process all through the years and across the various advertising campaigns to give us good information to make decisions with. So uh, I want to build on that because the board tracks and, and the, what you're holding staff accountable to is unaided awareness, right? So the, the key metric is unaided awareness. But I would assure you that the team here at CFP Board, Elizabeth Stewart, who is our Chief Operating Officer, and Gail Reisman, who's our Director of Advertising and Brand Engagement, and the advertising team at White64, and Ipsos, which is the brand tracking folks. We're looking at a variety of data and brand attributes and response. So yes, the key is unaided awareness, but as, we, uh, uh, as we're responsive and we see what ads are 
uh, being, uh, uh, as we see on the digital side, what's resonating and what's working. We're watching, the whole team is watching and making, uh, uh, making adjustments as we go. Uh, is there a hashtag for the campaign, someone asked, and yes, there is, and that's hashtag let's make a plan. That has been the, the campaign theme uh, from, from the beginning. Uh, just let me see what other designations compete with CFP. I will state that I have a conflict here as CEO of CFP Board. I don't think there are any competing <laughs> designations. So uh, uh, that others might disagree, but and I will readily admit my conflict when I answer that question. So, uh, uh, Richard, I think we're just about coming to an end. Uh, anything else you would like to say here? Well, the only thing I would like to say is I encourage all of the CFP professionals on the call with us here today, take advantage of this opportunity to not only promote the CFP brand and the value of working with a CFP professional, but also use it to enhance your own marketing efforts because the, the ability for us to use this campaign in our individual firms, coupled with the resources that you're all providing to CFP board through that $145 a year, it, it's a it's just a multiplier effect. Mm. Mike, talk once more. One one of the five main findings was that there was an opportunity for CFP professionals to tell their clients that they're CFP certified and their prospective clients. Anything else you would say about that? Well, I think the uh, the, the the consumer is saying, and it is part of the reason why um, they're looking for the CFP professional to be a partner. They're they're looking for a partner. Um, and because they're looking for that partner, uh, they want the CFP professional to to communicate to them uh, the merits of, of being in a role of being that kind of a partner. Um, and it goes back to the it goes back to the to the brand promise, the the importance of having a financial plan, of building awareness of the CFP brand, and then the confidence today and having a more secure tomorrow. So that partnership with the consumer is what's going to deliver on the brand promise. Great. We thank you all for taking time to join us. Matt and Heather, Mike, Richard, thank you for coming in from Kansas City today. I will remind you that we will have all of the assets posted online and available as of September 4th. Again, thank you for the opportunity to uh, work directly with you. We're excited here at the staff. I know the board saw this this morning earlier. They were excited. And uh, with that, we will stand adjourned.